All right, lecture number nine here. We're going to talk more about these B lymphocytes and these antibody weapons that they wind up um, making. So just to review, lymphocytes, like all of your blood cells, originate in your red bone marrow. And your B cells become fully mature there, and then they enter the blood, and then from the blood, they get into, um, they're able to move into your lymphatic tissues, your lymphoid organs, like your lymph nodes, lymph nodes, and your tonsils, and your spleen. Your T cells, on the other hand, they exit the red bone marrow, they travel through the blood, they go to the thymus, and uh, that's where they become fully mature functioning T lymphocytes. And then they leave the thymus, travel through the blood, they're able to exit the blood and get into your uh, lymphoid tissues where they are stationed and poised along with your B cells. They're, they're waiting together in those lymphoid organs to uh, intercept things that are foreign to the body. And so we talked about when we went over the lymphatic system, you know, your lymph nodes and your spleen and your tonsils and the pyrus patches down in your intestinal tract, those are great places to have these cells stationed because those are parts of the body where foreign microorganisms tend to enter. So that's a great place to have these guys there ready to intercept those types of things that are invading. All right, so here is a simplified version. You'll see a little bit more of a complex version when you take microbiology, but here's kind of a simplified version of what happens. Um, to activate a B lymphocyte. All right, so what we've got going on here is you have three different uh, B lymphocytes that are, you know, perhaps sitting together in a lymph node somewhere, and in comes an antigen. Now remember, an antigen is supposed to be a bad guy. That is a molecule on a foreign bacterium or virus or fungus or it could be on a pollen grain whatever it is it has arrived in this lymph node you know it drained out of a tissue where an infection has taken place and um, you know it may be on the surface of a bacterial cell the surface of a virus but it's some sort of a foreign molecule like a protein or a carbohydrate that's a part of a virus or a bacterium so those come comes floating into a lymph node like we were taking a look at earlier and then um, now these these y-shaped molecules that you see on the surfaces of the B cells those are called B cell receptors they're a type of receptor uh, so kind of like when you learned about hormones have very specific receptors that they attach to uh, B cells have receptors on their surfaces that bind to very specific antigens and we more or less have like a library of B lymphocytes that have slightly different receptors on their surfaces that can bind to the many gazillions of different kinds of antigens that we get exposed to. And if you notice here, this one, its receptors have attached to this antigen, whatever it might be. That could be a protein on the surface of an influenza virus. And these other two guys over here, their receptors did not attach because their receptors are not a match for this particular antigen. They, they would match up with something else we would get exposed to. Okay, so once this has happened, um, it is going to proliferate, which means it's going to divide over and over again. It becomes activated. It does mitosis, divides over and over again. You get a lot more copies of that particular cell. And that story is a little more complex than that, but you'll learn about that when you take microbiology. So you might make thousands and thousands of copies of this original cell up here. And uh, most of those become what we call plasma cells. So they go through a differentiation or a maturation process. They mature and they change. Um, they become more oval in shape. And these guys... Um, are called plasma cells, different from the use of the term plasma, like plasma in your blood, that's just what they're called. And their job is to secrete, crank out lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of antibodies. So these little Y-shaped molecules that you see right here, those are antibodies. These antibodies on their tips are going to be able to bind to other copies of this antigen. Okay, so in a sense, these molecules, these little Y-shaped molecules, 
uh, look a whole lot like the receptors up here that originally attached to this antigen. Um, but instead of being in the surface of the cell, they're being secreted, they're being released. Okay, so if that is happening in a lymph node, you know, a lot of this, where a lot of this takes place in your lymph nodes, um, the antibodies leave the lymph node. So if you remember your efferent vessels on your lymph nodes, they're going to wind up flow. These are proteins. They're solutes. They're in the fluids. They're going to flow through those efferent vessels. They're going to make their way back to the blood, the subclavian veins, where that right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct will empty them into the subclavian veins. Now they're in the bloodstream. The blood is going to circulate them all throughout the body. And these, uh, let's say you have an infection in some local tissue, these antibodies, wherever you have inflammation going on, they're going to exit those blood vessels in that area of inflammation. And they're going to go in there and they're going to match up with these foreign antigens. So if these are molecules on the surface of a bacterial cell, they're going to attach to the bacterial cell. They're going to tag it. All right, that's what happens the first time you get exposed to a very specific type of foreign invader. Now, what's going to happen the second time? If you notice over here on the right-hand side, this is what we were looking at on the last slide. Um, not all of these clones, you know, this is the original cell that got activated by the antigen, and it multiplied over and over again, and there may be thousands of copies. And some of those become what are called memory B cells. Most of them become these guys, the plasma cells that were secreting all those antibodies. Um, but some of them become memory B cells. So they don't make antibodies right away. They live for a long time. These guys are going to crank out antibodies for you know maybe a few weeks and then they're going to die. And these antibodies are going to go away. You don't have them permanently. They decompose and, and go away. The memory B cells, though, may live for many years, and then if you ever get exposed to this same antigen again, that same foreign invader, it gets activated really quickly and very quickly multiplies over and over and over and over and over again, and very quickly you make more of these plasma cells like we had up here, and um, they all start secreting antibodies these weapons that are going to get into your body fluids, go into your tissues where you have an infection taking place, and they're going to match up with, they're going to attach to that foreign invader. Some of the other ones will go on to become memory B cells again, and then those will wait around for years and years and years to see if you ever get infected by this same microorganism, whatever it is, again sometime in the future. So in a nutshell, that's your antibody uh, immunity, a simplified version. And then once you have those memory cells, you know, that's why if you get infected with a particular strain of the common cold virus, for example, you are unlikely to ever get infected with that same strain again uh, in the future, because if that particular type of common cold virus gets into your body again, you're going to have these memory cells that are going to detect it right away and they're going to um, get stimulated. You're going to start cranking out lots and lots of antibodies so quickly that you'll wipe the virus out before you even realize that it's there. Okay, humoral immunity. And again, this is referring to our antibodies, which I'm going to abbreviate as ABS for antibodies. Um, there are two major categories of antibody immunity, active and passive. Um, active means your own immune system response. Passive immunity is gained by pre-made antibodies. All right, so you're not making the antibodies yourself. Your own immune system isn't stimulated. You are receiving pre-made antibodies. Okay, and then in both cases, you have naturally acquired versions and you have artificially acquired versions. So naturally acquired active immunity, that's what happens when you are infected. You come into contact 
with some foreign invader like a pathogen that causes disease, your own immune system responds and you make your own antibodies. That's naturally acquired active immunity. That's generally, generally what we're talking about when we think about immunity. Artificially acquired active immunity, this is what occurs when we have vaccinations or vaccines. Um, it's like you're artificially being allowed to meet a microbe before you actually meet the real thing and so you build up immunity to it and this is used as a preventative to try to prevent you from ever becoming ill with that particular pathogen. We'll have a separate video lecture on on vaccines. Passive immunity can also be divided up into naturally acquired and artificially acquired. Um, naturally acquired means that antibodies pass. Now your own body hasn't made them, you're receiving them from another source. So this is like what happens if you, when an infant is nursing from the mother, the mother actually passes, and you may probably have heard about this before, passes antibody weapons against foreign invaders from her milk to the developing, to the baby. Also, uh, antibodies pass from a mother to a fetus across the placenta while the fetus is still developing in the womb. That way if a mother has become infected with a microorganism and she's made antibodies, those antibodies can move into the, the body of the fetus and protect the, the fetus from that microorganism as well. Artificially acquired passive immunity, this is where you may get injected with pre-made antibodies and we'll talk a little bit more about that on a separate video lecture. So there are cases where you are already sick or you've been exposed to something like let's say a rattlesnake venom and you don't have time to wait around for your own immune system to make its own antibodies. Instead you get injected with large amounts of pre-made antibodies that can find something um, home in on something like a rattlesnake venom and attach to it and block it from from uh, damaging you. So that's called artificially acquired passive immunity. Naturally acquired refers to things that occur through natural processes. Artificially acquired um, occurs through some sort of a medical procedure. All right, then the antibodies, a little bit more about these. These can also, they have some other uh, terms you should be or names you should be aware of immunoglobulins, gamma globulins are, are alternative names and they are proteins and we mentioned these back in, during chapter 17 we talked about the protein components of your blood and so you will find that you circulating you know they're solutes that are floating around in the in your blood plasma so again they are proteins um, most of them have a Y shape and on their tips over here they attach to antigens. And they're very specific about what they bind to. So the antibodies that bind to one antigen are not going to bind to another antigen. So if you've made anti <coughs> antibodies against common cold strain number 26, they're not going to attach to, in all likelihood, the antigens, the molecules on uh, common cold strain number 54. They're very specific about what they attach to. Their job is really to tag foreign antigens for destruction. So they're kind of like tags, like here's a, let's say this is a virus that you've been exposed to and you make antibodies that attach to its surface. That virus is now tagged for destruction. And generally what happens, if you guys remember a couple of uh, lectures ago, I mentioned that phagocytosis is the main way that your body destroys things that are foreign. Once a virus or a bacterium or a pollen grain, whatever it is, is attached uh, to antibodies, antibodies have tagged it, uh, your phagocytes, like your macrophages, have receptors on their surfaces that bind to these Y-shaped 
antibodies. They're very strongly attracted like magnets to antibodies. So if something is coated in these antibodies, it's more likely to get phagocytosis. Now we talked about how neutrophils and macrophages can find things like, back, like microorganisms anyway, but if you have antibodies coating the surface, they're way better. They're more strongly attracted to them and it's easier to find them. This is a diagram from your textbook which is just giving you a little bit more of a close-up view of what a, a typical antibody looks like. And again, they're Y-shaped proteins. They're actually made from one, oops, I had my pen off here. They're actually made from one, two, three, four different proteins that are together, held together by uh, bonds called disulfide bonds. That's what you're seeing there in, in yellow. Those are bonds between sulfur atoms in those four proteins. Um, and those, the bigger pieces are called heavy chains. The smaller ones you see there are called light chains. That's your typical antibody molecule. Now the really important parts of, a of an antibody are right here at the tips. So different antibodies will have different shapes, shaped little pockets in there that attach to particular antigens. So that little pocket in there will almost have like a lock and key fit with say like, like this is the, uh, that little cup there on the tip of the antibody. And uh, if my fist is a glycoprotein on um, hepatitis B virus, that glycoprotein, a part of that glycoprotein is going to fit down in that little cup there and that little cup is not going to fit probably much of anything else. They're very very specific about what they attach to just like you learned about with hormones and their receptors being very specific about what they uh, attach to. But a typical antibody like you see here has two binding sites so it could attach to two different copies of the same foreign invader, like you could have one copy of the virus over here and another one over there on that side. Okay, so that was just kind of a quick little overview on what these antibody tags, antibody weapons are that um, are made by the, uh, the activated B cells of your immune system. In lecture number 10, I'm going to talk a little bit about T lymphocytes. We're not going to go into a lot of detail on T lymphocytes, but there is one type I want to talk about because it's particularly important for helping you clear out infections with viruses inside the body.